This summer, the United States made a $559 billion decision. The consequences of that decision could make your next car $7,500 more expensive and send your electricity bills soaring unpredictably if they aren't already. On July 4th, 2025, President Trump signed the One Big Beautiful Bill Act into law. But this bill that was evidently supposed to make states more self-sufficient really just gave our energy independence away. That's because 3.5 million people in the US work in clean energy jobs, representing 42% of all energy jobs in the country. Meanwhile, coal only employs about 42,000 people. So solar employs nearly seven times more US workers than coal. Yet the current administration is cutting hundreds of billions of dollars from the sector creating jobs while keeping subsidies for the sector that's losing them. Subsidies that have existed for over a century. Today, I'll explain what the Big Beautiful Bill actually does, the staggering numbers behind its context, and how it impacts your daily life. Because regardless of your politics, we all pay electricity bills, we all need jobs, and we all want to avoid being left at the mercy of another country's supply chain. I'm Matt Farrell. Welcome to Undecided. This video is brought to you by Surfshark. This video is a little different for me. I try to keep politics off the channel, but the intersection of what this bill does and the topics that I cover, they just can't be ignored. The One Big Beautiful Bill Act fundamentally restructures how the US supports energy development. So let me ask you a question. If you were an investor, which industry would you choose to spend money on? One that's growing fast and creating jobs, or one that's shrinking? Well, this bill essentially takes money from the former and protects the latter. Here's why that's more than just bad business. First, the so-called Big Beautiful Bill eliminates electric vehicle tax credits by September 30th, 2025. That's the $7,500 credit for new EVs and $4,000 for the used ones. It's just gone. If you're planning to buy an electric car, your window for that discount is closing fast. Second, solar and wind tax credits are now facing a hard cutoff. To qualify, projects must begin construction by July of 2026 and be operational by December 31st, 2027. For homeowners, the residential solar credit expires December 31st of this year, 2025. The 30% discount on solar panels that helps keep them affordable is about to disappear. I've got a couple of videos on whether those kind of tax credits are fair, so I'm not going to rehash it all here. You can go watch those videos. Third, the bill adds new foreign entity of concern restrictions. And these rules make it incredibly difficult to use any components from China, Russia, Iran, or North Korea in renewable energy projects. Sounds reasonable, right? Except China currently makes 80% of the world's solar panels, 77% of the batteries. With such restrictive foreign entity rules and China's supply chain dominance, this will severely constrain most renewable projects. It's like banning flour and then wondering why the bakery is closed. You might think that this would spur US manufacturing. Instead, this might destroy it. The Solar Energy Industries Association estimates that 331 facilities will close or be canceled, and 330,000 clean energy jobs will vanish by 2030. America currently has enough solar manufacturing to meet domestic demand, but Wood Mackenzie projects a 17% decrease in installations because of these policies. We're not replacing Chinese manufacturing, we're ensuring nobody manufactures at all. But here's the kicker. While cutting from renewables, the bill actually expands fossil fuel subsidies beyond their historical $20 billion annual level. The bill reinstates full deductions for intangible drilling costs and reduces royalty rates, the kind of tax breaks oil companies have enjoyed for over a century. The bill even mandates new fossil fuel development. Drill, baby, drill. It requires 30 offshore oil and gas lease sales in the Gulf of Mexico and 15 additional lease sales across Alaska regions, including four in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, all by 2035. And coal has now been designated a critical mineral and will go on to receive production tax credits with streamlined permitting processes. The bill used budget reconciliation, which meant it only needed a simple majority to pass rather than the 60 votes that are usually needed in the Senate. This parliamentary move allowed Republicans to push through these changes without any Democratic support. The stated logic is energy independence and reducing reliance on China. Supporters argue that by adding foreign entity restrictions, the bill is protecting US energy security. The problem? We don't currently have the domestic manufacturing capacity to replace Chinese components. And none of that is factored into the timing of when these new rules go into effect. It also doesn't offer any support to spin up that domestic manufacturing. Think about it this way. If you suddenly banned all foreign-made car parts tomorrow, you wouldn't suddenly see more Fords and Jeeps manufactured from sea to shining sea. 
you'd have no new cars for a very long time until domestic production had time to fill that void, if it ever could. That's essentially what's happening with renewable energy equipment. The timing creates maximum pressure. By setting tight deadlines, the bill forces a rush of activity before credits expire. But renewable energy projects typically take two to four years to develop. Solar panel orders typically have lead times anywhere from six months to a year. Wind turbines can take 18 months to deliver. So the math just doesn't work. What's particularly clever or cynical, depending on your view, is how the bill preserves subsidies for acceptable technologies. Nuclear keeps its credits, and so does carbon capture, which primarily benefits oil companies that are using captured CO2 for enhanced oil recovery. Even geothermal maintains support. The big beautiful bill is not anti-subsidy, it's anti-specific technologies. It's picking winners and losers based on politics, not performance. And speaking of making smart choices about what technology to trust based on performance, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. I was recently traveling to energy conferences and between airport Wi-Fi and hotel connections, I leaned heavily on Surfshark VPN to keep my browsing secure and private. I've been using Surfshark for what feels like forever and I get so much use out of it. Surfshark is a fast, easy to use VPN full of incredible features that you can install on an unlimited number of devices with one account. But that's not all. Even shopping services will sometimes gate prices based on your location. So you can change your location to make sure you're getting the best deal. They also have add-ons to their VPN service to unlock things like Surfshark Alert, which will let you know if your email or personal details like passwords have been leaked in online data breaches. Right now, they're running a special deal. Go to surfshark.com undecided or use code undecided at checkout to get four extra months of Surfshark VPN. Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk to try it out for yourself. I've been using Surfshark for years, and I love it. Don't miss out on this great deal. The link's in the description below, and thanks to Surfshark and to all of you for supporting the channel. So what's the real cost when politics trumps performance? So let's talk money, because that's what really matters to most of us. Money makes the world go round. The bill cuts $559 billion in renewable energy support over the next 10 years. But what does that actually mean in terms of economic impact? To understand the scale, consider what we're giving up. President Biden's Inflation Reduction Act was projected to turn $740 billion in tax credits into $3.8 trillion in economic activity. That's a 4 to 1 return on taxpayer investment. It's like putting a dollar in a vending machine and getting $4 back out. So will the big, beautiful bill deliver similar returns? The research says no. When economists compare renewable and fossil fuel subsidies using the same exact methodology, there's a clear winner. Renewable subsidies generate significantly more economic activity, up to four times more per dollar invested. Think about it this way. Fossil fuel subsidies are like watering a plant that's already grown. The Congressional Budget Office found we're spending $90 to $200 in subsidies for each additional barrel of oil that's produced on top of the $80 market price. We're literally paying companies to do what they do anyway. That's like tipping your landlord for collecting your rent. But here's what those comparisons miss entirely. The doctor's bills. Air pollution from fossil fuels costs Americans $820 billion annually in medical expenses. If you break that down, every single American is paying about $2,500 per year in health costs from fossil fuel pollution. When you add these hidden costs, fossil fuel subsidies actually show negative returns to society. Now here's where it gets really interesting to me. Clean energy subsidies don't just create government spending, they unlock private investment like nothing else. Research from Crux Climate shows that every federal dollar attracts $5 in private investment. The track record is impressive. Between 2004 and 2022, renewable tax credits triggered $695 billion in private investments. A One World Bank study found a solar project in India attracted 32 private dollars for every public dollar they invested. That's not a subsidy, that's a catalyst. And then there's employment. Solar jobs have tripled since 2010, creating real careers in manufacturing, construction, and engineering. The best part? Most don't require a four-year degree. In 2022, 57% of new solar jobs were accessible without a bachelor's degree. The UN's research is clear. Renewable energy creates three times more jobs per dollar invested than fossil fuels. The International Energy Agency found similar results across multiple countries. So we're not talking about numbers on a spreadsheet. These are middle-class careers in communities across the country. And you'd think these numbers would settle the debate, but watching this unfold reminds me of 2007 when former Microsoft CEO Steve Ballmer laughed at the iPhone. 
there's no chance the iPhone is going to get any significant market share. BlackBerry's CEO dismissed it as one more entrant into an already very busy space. Today, Apple is worth more than Microsoft and BlackBerry combined, and BlackBerry doesn't even make phones anymore. This is the innovator's dilemma in action, dismissing disruptive technologies that seem inferior but improve rapidly. Solar and wind started expensive, but now they're the cheapest electricity sources in history. Yet we're protecting the energy equivalent of BlackBerry while the iPhone of energy takes over the world. We want light bulb moments, but this is nothing but dim decision making. It's not just the big beautiful bill at issue here. Since Trump came back into office, the writing has been on the wall for renewable energy projects. The impact has been swift and brutal. Companies have canceled over $22 billion in clean energy projects. That's $8 billion in just the first quarter of 2025, nearly four times what was canceled in all of 2022 through 2024 combined. But let me give you some specific examples. Fryer Battery canceled a $2.6 billion facility in Georgia. Core Power abandoned a $1.2 billion plant in Arizona despite having an $850 million government loan approved. Aspen Aerogels moved a $1 billion investment to Mexico and China, explicitly saying China's 50% EV adoption rate made it the better market. Then there's the brain drain in research. Nature surveyed more than 1,200 US-based scientists and found that 75% are considering leaving the country. Europe launched a 600 million euro Choose Europe for Science program specifically to attract these researchers. And France alone added another 100 million euros to the pot. The Department of Energy has already laid off 114 employees at the National Renewable Energy Laboratory. They slashed $405 million in university research grants, 24 clean energy demonstration projects worth $3.7 billion terminated. MIT, Caltech, and Cornell are all suing over these cuts. China's Thousand Talents Plan, which has recruited over 7,000 researchers since 2008, now specifically targets laid off US renewable energy scientists. Chinese cities offer massive incentives. Taizhou is giving out $14,000 signing bonuses. And Guilin County provides $42,000 to PhD graduates. Other countries are buying our talent. For us, it's brain drain. For them, it's a brain gain. So what does this mean for your daily life? Let's start with your wallet. As I mentioned before, if you're planning to buy an electric vehicle, you have until September 30th of this year to get that $7,500 tax credit. After that, some EVs become significantly more expensive overnight. The used EV credit of $4,000, same deadline. And if you're thinking about getting solar panels for your home, well, that 30% tax credit expires December 31st of this year. On a typical $20,000 system, that's a $6,000 discount gone. Many installers are already booked solid through the deadline. So if you're considering solar, I'd hurry. And your electricity bill gets more complicated too. Renewable energy provides price stability. Wind and solar have no fuel costs, so prices don't spike when oil goes up. The Roosevelt Institute found that renewable electricity has never had extreme price volatility, while fossil fuel spikes historically trigger recessions. Less renewable energy means more price uncertainty. And the irony? Republican districts are getting hit the hardest. They received most of the Inflation Reduction Act investments because they have more open land for large projects. Now they're seeing the most cancellations. It's economic self-sabotage on a massive scale. Long term, this reshapes entire communities. Coal mining towns spent decades dying as mines closed. Clean energy jobs were bringing things back. Manufacturing, construction, maintenance. Now those opportunities are vanishing before they ever existed. The global context makes things even more stark. China invested $940 billion into clean energy in 2024. That's nearly triple America's $338 billion. And we're cutting while they're accelerating. Clean energy now represents 10% of China's entire GDP. China isn't just doing this for environmental reasons. It sees the opportunity for economic growth and energy independence. By 2030, China will account for 60% of all global renewable additions. The country already controls 80% of solar manufacturing, 95% of silicon wafers, and 77% of batteries. The gap isn't closing. It's becoming a chasm that we're helping to dig. Europe added 80 gigawatts of renewable capacity in 2023. India is targeting 500 gigawatts by 2030. Even oil-rich Middle Eastern countries are going all in on solar. The world is moving in one direction, and the US just chose another. Backward. The impact on innovation could be generational. 
When researchers leave, they rarely come back. Brain drain recovery typically takes decades, even with policy reversals. Every scientist who moves to Beijing or Berlin takes their knowledge, their networks, and their future innovations with them. Market projections show global renewable energy reaching $4.86 trillion by 2033. That's a 14.9% annual growth. By pulling back now, America isn't just losing current market share, we're giving up position in the fastest growing sector on the global economy. The technology standards being written today will govern energy systems for decades. Without American companies at the table, Chinese firms set the rules. That creates long-term dependencies, security vulnerabilities, and lost export opportunities worth hundreds of billions. The One Big Beautiful Bill Act protects yesterday's energy instead of building tomorrow's. We're cutting $559 billion from renewables, the sector creating more jobs and better returns while maintaining century-old fossil fuel subsidies. This affects everyone. EV credits expire on September 30th, home solar credits expire at December 31st, manufacturing jobs are leaving for China, our best researchers are fleeing to Europe, and these deadlines are real, and they're coming really fast. You may have noticed I haven't made a single climate change argument. I don't have to. These are simply better technologies, better investments, and better paths to a livable future. Clean air is essential for our health, lowering energy costs is necessary for our wallets, increasing jobs is crucial for our economy. The case for renewable energy stands on economics alone. So what can you do? Know your deadlines if you're considering an EV or solar panels. Watch your local job market as clean energy employment shifts, and vote with your wallet. The market still matters, even when policy works against it. And the renewable energy sector will survive because it's the cheapest electricity ever created. But as for the United States' role in this future, decisions like these are making ourselves weaker, not stronger. And that's not great. But what do you think about these massive shifts in energy policy? Are you seeing impacts in your community already? Jump in the comments and let me know. And over on Patreon, I have an extended cut of this video that gets into where scientists are doing their pushback. If you'd like to join, the link's in the description. And be sure to listen to my follow-up podcast, Still To Be Determined, while I keep this conversation going. Keep your mind open, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next one.